As best as I can tell, this Pixio PXC277 Advanced doesn't support FreeSync. I mean, they say it does on their website and product listings and in the on-screen menu, and Nvidia lets me enable Adaptive Sync, but the data from my open source response time tool shows that it does not adaptively refresh. Let me show you what I mean. This graph shows the light level over time during a response time transition. The transition doesn't matter here, what does is those little waves after the overshoot spike. Those waves are each new frame being drawn. Normally you see those because they're using a PWM backlight, but what's important here is that this shows us how long there is between new frames. At 165 hertz, this monitor's maximum refresh rate, that means that there should be six milliseconds between frames. And if we measure those little waves here, we find that each of them is six milliseconds apart. Perfect, just as we expected. Now, for good measure, I set the monitor to run at 60 hertz in Windows and ran the test again. This time, those waves are much slower. 16.7 milliseconds specifically, which is spot on for 60 hertz. So we know this is a good way for us to check what refresh rate the monitor is running at at any given time. It is a reliable source of data. So now for the real test. I turned Adaptive Sync on in the menu, Adaptive Sync on in the NVIDIA control panel, and set OSRTT to limit the frame rate of the Unreal Engine 4 game to 60 FPS. I launched the test, verifying that it was indeed running at 60 FPS, and by the way, this video is all one take. I will speed up the test section as that isn't the important part, but it's all one contiguous clip. Now, looking at those results, specifically the raw data graphs, and manually measuring that wave, and yep, six milliseconds. It's not adaptively syncing at all. Taking a closer look at that graph, you can see that no matter where you measure the wave, a single wave takes just six milliseconds, the exact same as when it's running at 165 hertz natively and with a thousand FPS cap in a real engine. Because I know that someone will spot this and ask, I did also retest with G-Sync set to full screen and windowed mode, just in case, but no, it made no difference at all. It still doesn't adaptively refresh. For good measure, I also tested again at 100 FPS, just in case the adaptive sync range for this monitor doesn't include the 60 FPS that I'm using for some reason, but same again, no difference. Also, to be clear, I'm testing all of this via DisplayPort. Now, for the sake of absolute completeness, I also built up a system with an AMD GPU to run the test again, and again, here is the full recording. Adaptive Sync is enabled in Radeon settings. It lets me enable it, so the display must be reporting some level of support for that feature. I'll again fast forward through the test section, but you can see that on the top right it is locked to 60 FPS throughout the test. Now, with the results open, looking at the graph and manually measuring the waves, and again, it's right around 6 milliseconds, not the 16.7 milliseconds that we should be seeing. Now, this isn't the first time that a reviewer has caught a problem like this. Samsung was caught doing the same thing in 2021, although that report didn't get quite as much publicity as it really should have. I'm hoping that this is just a technical oversight and one that can be addressed with a firmware update. But regardless, it's not good to be, as far as I can tell anyway, faking compliance with one of the headline features of the monitor. Now, moving on from that mess, when it comes to the actual response times, I'm afraid to say it doesn't actually get any better. Pixio rather boldly claims that this VA panel has not only a one millisecond response time, but a one millisecond gray to gray response time. See, most manufacturers get away with calling every monitor a one millisecond monitor because they quote the pointless MPRT or moving picture response time figure, where when using the backlight strobing mode, the panel is only on for one millisecond per frame. 
So while it's a useless measurement, it's more of a misrepresentation than an outright lie. If you actually test this thing though, even on the absolutely horrific high overdrive mode, and if you completely ignore the insane overshoot, you still only get an average of 4.7 milliseconds. And if you include the overshoot time, by the way, which considering just how bad it actually is, is pretty necessary, you get an average of 10.3. That is pretty far from the one millisecond claimed figure. Here's what that looks like in slow-mo. It does speed up the panel considerably in the mid-range, the darker shades still take an age to transition, but you are also left with considerable overshoots, or inverse ghosting. It's often more distracting than regular ghosting, as instead of just partially faded versions of previous frames giving you a sort of blurred or smeared effect, this has inverted colours which are often shining brightly at you. On the more reasonable, yet still weirdly overdriven in the mid-range transitions middle overdrive mode, you get an average of 8.6 milliseconds, or 6 milliseconds if you ignore the overshoot time. This is likely the mode that I would use, as while it does still have some overshoots on lighter shades, Generally speaking, it's less noticeable as it helps improve the initial response time compared to the low setting. That mode is fine too, if a little slower, with an average of more like 8.7 milliseconds or 8.1 if you ignore the overshoot time. The other measurement that OSRTT can do is latency, specifically on display latency, as in how long it takes for a frame to actually be processed and start to be drawn. A good result here is anything less than one frame of latency, and a really good result is basically where none of the results take longer than one frame. So in this case, a good result would be an average of about three milliseconds, with no results being higher than about six milliseconds. So how did this do? Oh, that, that's awful. Um, it averaged almost exactly two frames worth of delay, with no results being on the first frame. The lowest we got was a little over 7 milliseconds, and the worst was over 18 milliseconds. That's pretty bad. Now, I also use a time sleuth, as it measures on-display latency a little differently and normally has better resolution since it controls when it outputs new frames. The only problem here is that it reported an astonishingly bad 30 milliseconds of on-display latency. Now, that is with a 1080p signal over HDMI at 60Hz, so let's run OSRTT again over HDMI at 144Hz just to make sure that the HDMI port isn't actually slower and... Oh dear, it is. Well, the HDMI port can only run 144Hz, meaning a frame is now 6.9 milliseconds long, we would expect at most a slight increase to around 14 milliseconds of on-display latency, but what we get is a considerable increase to over 60 milliseconds. In fact, it's now solidly 2.5 frames worth of latency, as only a handful of the 100 results fall within the second frame now. So if you are planning on gaming on this with a, a console, with this monitor, you're going to have an even worse experience than if you were game, you know, PC gaming over display ports. Um, it's like a week later, um, and I've got something that you need to see. If you haven't watched it already, Wendell from Level 1 Text reviewed this very monitor and generally found it a good option. Long story short, we collectively tested our units over the course of a couple of days and found some pretty confusing conclusions. So first off, nothing that I tried would make this adaptively refresh. This runs at the frequency that you set it to in your driver or in Windows and will not adaptively refresh. I'm pretty confident on that one. What I'm less confident about is what the hell the scaler is doing. You know how I said that the time sleuth reported something ridiculous like 30 milliseconds of latency over HDMI? Yeah, Wendell found that too. Except, if you disable FreeSync and Overdrive in just the on-screen menu, it's down to just one or two milliseconds. 
Yeah, that's the same for DisplayPort 2. Here are the OSRTT results with FreeSync enabled just in the on-screen menu, and now here it is with FreeSync disabled in the menu. Just to make this clear, here is those figures in a bar chart. The maximum with FreeSync off doesn't even come close to the minimum with FreeSync on just in the menu. To be clear, the HDMI port is still a touch slower, but that is mostly thanks to the slower 144Hz refresh rates rather than the 165Hz that you get over DisplayPort. So that's all good. This revelation changes how I feel about the monitor quite a lot, including what the gaming experience feels like. With FreeSync on in the menu, the monitor is just a constant disadvantage in anything even remotely competitive. With it off, it's much more like a normal VA monitor experience. That is to say, kinda nav. Uh, the slow response times, especially in the darker areas, mean that motion is blurred, which makes hitting targets, be that enemies in FPS games or apexes in racing games, much harder. That's not unique to this panel though, and at this price point, that is a lot more to be expected. It's not impossible to game on this, obviously, but a nice IPS is going to be a better experience for sure. Now back to the younger, dumber Andrew. If you are concerned about the colours of the panel, you'll be happy to know that despite it wildly missing its claimed 97% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum with more like 88%, that's still a great result and it looks great to the eye. As you might expect for a VA panel, the blacks are incredibly deep. The contrast ratio is around 4000 to 1, with a peak brightness slightly higher than quoted at around 330 nits. The uniformity is better this time, check out my um, last Pixio monitor review to see what I'm talking about there, although the gamma curve is a little off. Accuracy wise, it isn't bad. It reported a Delta E of just over 2, 2.07 specifically, with a couple of higher results. It's not perfect, but it's a gaming display, so that's more than good enough. Physically, it's a nice enough, if cheap, design. The stand offers exactly one axis of freedom, that being tilt, and the panel sits pretty low to your desk too, although it does offer a vase mount on the back, so any issues with the stand are easily resolved. The foot doesn't take up much space on your desk and is remarkably stable too, which is always good. The styling is a little gamery, but that's fine. It still comes with the wonderfully labeled I.O. ports, specifically one HDMI 2.0 port, two DisplayPort 1.2 ports, and a USB port that's only there for firmware updates. The on-screen menu is controlled by a much nicer joystick-style switch than the PX275C Prime I reviewed recently, and the menu itself is nicer too. It is still pretty basic, uh, although you do get four overdrive modes in total now if you include off. You can use the MPRT mode, aka backlight strobing, but it disables FreeSync, although I suppose as we found out that's not a big deal, and it is a great way to strain your eyes, so I personally wouldn't bother. Hi again! Seeing as the new revelations myself and Wendell discovered about the monitor kind of changed what I think about it, my conclusion changed too. Well, actually it didn't. Don't buy this thing. It is cheap. Pixie listed it at $240, which puts it firmly in the budget category, but for just 10 bucks more, you can get an AOC CQ27G3S, which is equally a 1440p, 165Hz curved VA monitor that, while still likely to have a slow, smeary response time, especially in darker areas, should have functioning adaptive sync support and likely much better tuning both to its firmware and to its overdrive modes. If FreeSync actually worked on this, I would say that it's a decent enough choice for the price, if a little buggy, but with as best as I can tell, no functioning adaptive sync support, despite widely claiming AMD FreeSync Premium, this isn't worth your cash. Okay, I'll hand it back to baby Andrew again. With that said, those are my thoughts, my test results, and my experiences with the PXC277 Advanced, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. 
What do you think about the free sync issue? Is it something that would you know bother, bother you, uh, or is it you know not something you're that worried about for whatever reason? Uh, and what do you think about the response times and latency and the monitor in general? I'd love to hear your thoughts in those comments down below. If for some reason you do want to check out this monitor, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, you can also check out the rest of the links in the description if you want to support the channel, because I keep making enemies faster than I, uh, I can make friends, so um, I'd appreciate your support where, uh, where you can give it. Um, if you want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, and if you want an open source response time tool for yourself, or maybe you want to recommend it to your other favorite reviewer, because clearly I'm definitely one of them, then uh, check out osrtt.com. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.